back to another episode on the Weston Smith channel. Today's is pretty dope. We actually, Devin and I, take the kayaks out to a six spot and catch some fish on some big swim baits and top waters. We were on a time crunch, we catch some good fish, and then I actually bring you guys along to clean these kayaks with me because they're absolutely filthy. Let's go ahead and get on the water. All right, what up, gang? Limited time, and we are going to try and get after some fish on a fluke today. If we can't hit them on the fluke, though, I got a bunch of other stuff rigged up. I got a swim bait, I got a frog. It's looking overcast right now, man. We're getting out at about 8.45 in the morning. One of the cooler mornings this week. Kayak is still just as heavy as ever. But this autopilot is a dream once you get out onto the water. And then coat a motor with spot lock. Oh boy, let's just get up here at the bow. Slide her down here and get to fishing. Oh yeah. Do I have a fish? I think I have a fish on the fall. Yeah. Oh, he's good. I didn't even know I had a fish. This dude thought he was having him some breakfast. All right, first chunk of the morning. Let's go ahead and get him in the water. First cast too. I gotta get some more. There we go, <laughs> on the citizen. Come here, bud. Oh yeah, come here. Oh, you're a good fish. <gasps> Came off. Probably a solid closer to four. Closer to four. Dang it. Ur, ur, ur. All right, they're going after him. All right, changing things up. Little smaller profile, another color in that Mega Bass Dark Sleeper. This is the three quarter ounce. This one is definitely a lot more see-through, so you can kind of see how that, that nose weight is in there. Uh, how this thing is kind of manufactured, how it's working. But we're gonna go ahead, toss it on, and see if it might entice a few more bites. Switching things up. We've only got about another 30 minutes out here or so, so let's see if we can't lock one in. Battleshed. Got one on the battleshed. All right. Woo. First one of the day comes on the battle shad. Swim bait. Oh my gosh. And look at what would have happened if I would have let that line loose, boys. That was crazy, y'all. I was literally just making this Instagram story. And uh he flopped while I was doing so. And I would say that's a that's a healthy two pounder, but I mean, I would say two and a half given how fat it is, but uh, not even a three pounder hitting that big old beefy battle shed. And I just switched up the cadence. Let me tell you what I did on that retrieve. I've been getting grass on almost every cast. Uh, I gotta turn away from the wind while I talk to you guys. I've been getting grass on almost every cast because it's so caked up back here. But you find the grass, you find the bass. That's what I've always been told, man. So here's what I did. I just started to cast and reel right away. Cast, reel right away. Steady cruise, nothing super fast. The flash from this underspin got that one's attention though and uh, got it done. So I'm not letting it sink is what I'm getting at. Normally I like to let these baits sink uh, very low to the bottom, start creeping it. But in this case, they're hanging above that grass, which is uh, only a foot or two below the surface. And in some cases, in, or areas, I'm sorry, almost like inches below the, uh, the, the surface. Talk, Weston. And so yeah, that's what I did on that retrieve to switch it up. And the first time I bring it back higher in the water column, is when I got that bite. So I'm just kind of trying to key in and identify what works for this specific spot with this bait. And uh, that was nuts. Let's try and get another. Yeah. 
got him. On the pop and frog, <laughs> right in the pads. Exactly what we want. Fish number two, one on the big bait, one on the top water. Those are the days, man. We'll see you, bud. Woo. Oh, he went for it. Missed it, dang it. Oh, shoot. Got him, got him that time. Oh, god damn. Got him. <laughs> Another on the froggy. Popping gets their attention even in the wind, man. That's what's good about this lip. Can really bring him in from a ways away. See you, bud. Yeah, with all this breeze and chop, if you were to use a walking frog, you wouldn't get as much attention. Potentially, there's some decent clarity in here. So if they're on the prowl, I'm sure they'd see it. But that popping lip just gets that extra commotion on top of the surface. And what I mean by that is this, this lip right here on the frog. A lot of those frogs' noses that you see are just kind of pointed at the store. And so those guys right there are so you can kind of walk it. And uh, this one right here is meant for more disturbance on top of the water, more vibration, attract those fish from maybe deeper down to come up and eat on top of those lily pads. So loving the popping frog, guys. If you want to pick that up, you can grab that at Carl's Bait and Tackle. I'll link it down in the description, man. Save 30% on your baits with Carl's Bait and Tackle like us. Let's catch some more fish. Making good pops and noise. Where's my bite? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Oh, no. Had a good one. All right, y'all. Weston's been getting some top water blow ups. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this guy back in the water, make our way over kind of closer to Weston, and try and get on some more. Hey, feisty. Last look. Awesome fish. Bye, bud. Oh. This is why you want this kayak, man. Spot locked in 16 mile an hour winds when most people wouldn't even take their kayak out. They would not be able to hold themselves in position to fish these pads. And I can just spot lock it and work the whole edge. This is insane. If you guys haven't checked out the spot lock, Autopilot 120 by Old Town Canoes. Information is in the description. Because almost every new area, I mean, I've had like seven blow ups. There he is. Got him. <laughs> there we go. Alrighty then, buddy. See ya. Got him. Ah, oh, crap. Ah, there was too much slack. Oh, there we go. Oh, he came off. How did he come off? Oh, gosh. Oh, All right, I got another one. That dude is a chunk. Doubled up. Oh, double up. Weston and I are doubled up. You better land that one, dang it. So sick. Maybe we have time for a couple more casts. Gotta make our way back in. Bye. All right, Devin and I's first double up of the morning. She just got one on the popper. Another on the frog for me. About to have to leave too, man. What a way to end it. Also guys, this year's Zuri we got in last month's mystery tackle box. Oh, I took it out of his mouth. Dang it. All right guys, we are headed back to the boat ramp. All right. Okay guys, Devin is out running some errands. I'm gonna go ahead and start cleaning these kayaks, man, because they are filthy. Okay, I figured I'd just get a couple more things done, so I went ahead and aired up the tire. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go fill up the Camaro with gas. It's been on the trickle charger for weeks without even really being ran, so it's kind of like low on fuel. Let's go fill that thing up, take her for a spin. So we decided to just drop these off at the storage. Looking like there's gonna be some bad storms, man, so we're gonna put the STI in the garage rather than uh, having these in the garage. Just got the rods out of the Yakima Topwater. Check this out. If you guys have not seen this yet, this is part of our kayak trailer build. This thing holds eight rigged combos, and we actually have, uh, this is kind of like a power pole for the kayaks in here. But yeah, eight rigged combos. Devin and I had six in here earlier just for today's adventure. Lock that down. Good to go for your long hauls. There's the other bona fide you guys haven't seen in a while. Zeke hasn't been to storage yet, so he's just checking things out. Got the motor and the PDL. Ready? Let's go, Zeke, come on. 
Good boy.